In this video, I'm going to share my top tips in treating any vital warts in dermatology. This video is intended primarily for healthcare professionals like general practitioners, GPs, who are treating patients with viral warts, but can also be quite useful for patients themselves who just want to learn more about the various treatment options we provide in secondary care. I'm going to share with you some of the things we do in dermatology in the hospital to treat these nasty little skin conditions. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Chris and I am a dermatology trainee based in Glasgow in the UK. And on this channel, I share my life experience working in dermatology as well as my journey towards becoming a consultant dermatologist in the UK. Before I talk about viral warts and its management, I just want to make a small comment we don't necessarily see a lot of viral warts in dermatology in secondary care. And this is because it is regarded as a non-life-threatening, non-serious health condition that a lot of people suffer with. And a lot of the time, these lesions do go away on their own over time. As such, um, these are managed by patients themselves or sometimes by primary care. We do see quite um, severe cases of viral warts in uh, the hospitals and these are patients with widespread viral warts that are typically resistant to topical treatments already provided in primary care. And so in this video, hopefully I can share this spectrum of treatments that we have in the department for you to think about. So what are warts? So essentially, warts are squamous cell papillomas, and these are growths in the skin caused by a virus called the human papilloma virus, or HPV in short. And there are over 150 subtypes of HPV, and they can give rise to the different types and appearances of viral warts. HPV infection happens through direct skin contact when there is a breakage in a skin barrier. Say for example, if you're walking bare feet in public spaces with rough surfaces, you are more prone to getting uh, viral warts due to the inoculation of the virus itself. And specifically, it will be the plantar warts that you are at risk of getting. So what are the different warts we know of? Well, we've got the common warts, which are due to HPV2 infection, and they are small cauliflower-like papules with rough hyperkeratotic surface, and they typically appear on the backs or dorsal of the hands and fingers. Next, we have the plantar warts, which are typically found beneath the pressure points on the soles of the feet. Now, there are two types of plantar warts. We have the mermisial warts, which are due to HPV1 infection, and they appear as very tender, compact-looking, sharply demarcated um, lesions on the soles of the feet. Now, this is different from the other subtype, which is also known as the mosaic wart, and this is due to HPV2 infection. It is less tender, more superficial, and presents as a plaque of closely grouped lesions on the soles of the feet. Next, we have plain warts, which are small, flat top, round papules, typically presenting on the face, the backs of the hands and shins. And they are normally due to HPV3 and 10 infection. Filiform warts appear as clusters of finger-like projections arising from a narrow base, and they are common on the face and neck. And last but not least, we have the anal genital warts, as I've previously mentioned, and they are typically due to HPV6 and 11. So how do you differentiate a plantar wart from a corn or callus? Well, I think it is often quite difficult to tell the difference, especially when they can look so similar and with thickened skin and rough texture. But here are some of the tips we do in dermatology to tell the difference. Number one, viral warts are more painful when pinched or when you apply lateral pressure, as opposed to a callus or corn when it is more painful on direct pressure. Number two, warts are not always restricted to pressure points like the balls of the feet and toes, whereas a corn or callus is always at a pressure point. And lastly, what you can do is you can try to pare it down using a clean scalpel blade, pumice stone or emery board. And in a viral wart, what you see are these black dots and these are thrombosed blood vessels. And as you can imagine, a viral wart needs its own blood supply to provide nutrients to help the virus to grow. Whereas in a corn or callus, there is no blood supply found, so you get this homogeneous appearance or smooth appearance with skin markings maintained, and there is no thrombosed blood vessels to be seen. 
Now, this brings the question, do we need to treat all the robots? The answer is no, we don't. And this is because in majority of the cases, the viral warts will resolve spontaneously over time as the body's immune system takes effect. The treatments we offer don't necessarily kill the virus per se, but what they do is they remove the virus-containing skin. We have to advise our patients to be persistent with treatment and be patient with it as it will take time for the wart itself to clear. This is because HPV affects the basal layer of the epidermis or the lowest layer of the skin and as such, the wart can recur quite quickly if we don't treat it properly. Statistics have shown that in children without any treatments, the clearance rate is around 50% within 6 months and around 90% within 2 years. Now, viral warts are more persistent in adults, especially people with pre-existing health conditions such as people with low immune system, organ transplant patients and patients who smoke. And so in these groups of people, we tend to offer treatments as these viral warts can be quite persistent, annoying and cause discomfort. So how do we treat these warts? Well, I tend to classify them into two categories based on the location of the warts. So number one, lesions on the face and the other one would be lesions elsewhere on the body except the uh, anal genital sites. For lesions on the body except the genital areas, we offer topical treatments such as glutarol 10% which contains glutaraldehyde and you, what you do is you ask the patients to pare the wart down first using an emery board or pumice stone then apply the ointment to the affected skin you can do it once or twice a day until a resolution of the lesion Another topical treatments you can consider is salicylic acid or lactic acid and there are various brands out there and they include Oclusol, Vortex, Virgon and Salatac and they have various strengths of like uh, salicylic acid. What we normally go for is the higher strength such as 50% salic salicylic acid. We advise patients to first of all soak the affected skin in warm water, dry out with a clean towel and um, after that you want to advise patients to pare the skin down using an emery board or pumice stone after which apply the um, gel or ointment to the affected area. Occlude it with a waterproof plaster or duct tape and you can do it every night for up to three months. The cure rate is around 50 to 70 percent within three months. An alternative treatment method is to use silver duct tape and this you can ask the patients to buy over the counter as well. And what you do is you leave it on for six days after which on day seven you remove the tape, soak the affected skin in warm water then pare it down with a pumice stone for example. Then leave it uncovered for a day, repeat the same um, routine for up to 28 days and the cure rate is around 85% which is actually quite effective. You can also try Aphidex 5% cream which you can use under occlusion once again with a waterproof plaster once at night for around 4 to 12 weeks. In secondary care or even primary care, we sometimes offer cryotherapy which basically means using liquid nitrogen to freeze off all the um, virus containing skin. For cryotherapy, it is essential to freeze the area for over 10 seconds uh, or as much as you can because you want to reach the basal layer of the uh, epidermis for it to work and you have to do it quite often so once twice weekly or if this is not the case then at least once every fortnight for a few months for it for you to see an effect the other option is through surgery and we offer curatage and cautery where we basically shave off the affected skin um, and then burn off the basal layer with hyfrication. And this can be quite effective, however, there is a risk of auto-inoculation causing more um, viral warts to appear. So for facial lesions, other than using the topical treatments like Aphidix, we can try Aldara. The, another good alternative is uh, Adapalene 0.1%, which is a topical retinoid. And you advise patients to apply once at night for around 4 to 12 weeks. 
but warn them that it can cause skin irritation and as such they may not tolerate it as well. The other thing would be cryotherapy um, which again can cause skin irritation, blistering and severe cases, dispigmentation and lastly of course through surgery through curatage and cautery but again we run the risk of auto inoculation. And there you have it, these are the various treatment options available to treat viral warts. If you like this content and if you want to see more, please like this video and drop a comment down below to tell me how I'm doing. Um, and if you want to know more about other videos, do check out my other videos as well with the link down below. Thank you for watching once again. See you next time. Bye!